no, no, I'm not. I, I think uh, like I, I think I, I mentioned before. I accidentally sent him a friend request a long time ago, and then I was surprised uh, fairly recently that he accepted the friend request. But then that lasted for about a day or two, <laughs> because uh, oh, maybe I maybe think. when he realized what I was posting, uh, he just unfriended me. You know, which to me is kind of a I don't know. It's kind of like a cowardly act. Yeah, maybe he's yeah. he's afraid to confront, you know, what what people have to say regarding his ministry. You know, I welcome anybody. You know, I I just understand that when you start interpreting whatever you have to, what you're showing me, and it comes out to be like a, something physical or earthly, or that's that's what this means. And and no, no, I I I have and has to at least be spiritual, you know, for me to look at. Well, I mean, it, it's getting more and more uh, physical, literal. When just fairly recently, I think I heard the uh, the interpretation, uh, you know, things happening in Israel, or you know, uh, judgment going from nation I to nation. To Chris McCann for about I don't know, give or take, uh, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, he was talking. Somebody was telling him about a nursing home incident. Right, I heard I that. I, I didn't get the whole context of everything what they said, but. Uh, you know, oh, you know, God gives a, a very carnal response to the whole question. Well, you know? and, yeah. You know, we need to do this and do that, and uh, there's legal matters. You talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's nothing of substance. Yeah, hey, you know, you got a sister who's who's trying to be, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, a pain regarding certain things. Uh, yeah, it's it's true. You can you can reach out to the law, uh, but I, I think the verses or what the person perhaps was looking for, uh, he was he was giving them more of a an earthly uh, rendition, yeah. Yeah. just like Mister Camping used to do. You know, you're, you're getting into that point where you're giving people personal advice on family matters. You know. Uh, when I don't know, it's, it's, I, to me, I think it's best to to let them know that hey, everyone's situation is different. You know, they can pray for wisdom, but certainly, I mean, on the one hand, you hear him say, "Well, the spiritual is the most important uh, interpretation of the Bible," but then when he gives that advice, uh, they're anything but spiritual. You know? Yeah, exactly. So he's not looking at. And, and, you know, what do you think of a ministry that is telling you that you're not supposed to vote? What do you think about that, Margaret? Someone tells you that uh, you shouldn't be voting today. You shouldn't take part in any uh, social uh, uh, gatherings or issues. You shouldn't uh, be in the picket line. You shouldn't, uh, you know, you shouldn't do any of that, especially today, because... God is judging the institutions. Well, as far as voting, that would just, you know, that's my per personal preference. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, if I vote or not vote, that does not mean I'm not saved. Well, the teaching is, I mean, what they're offering is that you shouldn't take sides. I, I don't know if they realize it, but when he says that, you, you, you know, we should not be taking sides, Politically, well, then you're telling everyone that they shouldn't vote, they should not run for office, they should not run to be president, they should not have anything to do with political issues, right? That's essentially yeah, no, what. No, that's what no, well, that—that's what. That's because essentially. I, I, would do, I wouldn't get in no picket line, no, because I'm not of the world. I'm not going to get out there and picket against this or that. But that's my preference to right. each his own. Right. But I, as far as voting, if I want to vote, I'll vote. If I don't want to vote, I won't vote. And, and, you know, and I don't care what, what somebody else thinks. Right. You know, that's between me and God, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and that's our right to vote. So if I want to vote, I'll vote, you know. 
That's our right to, to go out and pick it and all that, but I'm not going to do that now because that's a whole, to me, that's a whole different situation. But as far as voting, I well, I, I think I think I think it depends on the cause, you know. I, well, think I don't it, care what cause it is. I'm not going to get out there in any picket line. I don't care what the cause is. Right. No, but I might vote, and then again, I might not vote. I don't yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is, when you tell someone that they're not to take sides, mm -hmm. political sides, well, then that's what you do when you vote. Well, like I said, that's my preference. That's what I would tell the individual. You know, they say don't vote. Well, I won't, you know, if they if they ask me, are you going to vote? I say, well, I don't know. I might, I might not. They say it's political. Right, line. right. It's 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 up to you to decide whether or not you want to vote. And then I but, say that's my business. Right, but if someone is telling you that the Bible is teaching that you should not pick a side, well, then shouldn't. I don't see anywhere in the Word of God where it tells me that I shouldn't vote. Well, exactly, but I mean that's the kind of thing the. You know, I think when you start to interpret the Bible literally, you, you end up with these kind of teachings and doctrines. They're very earthly, they're very carnal, you know, and, and, and you, you yeah. bypass, I think, altogether the, the, the intent or the true spiritual meaning. Uh, on the one hand, you're, you're telling people, oh, yeah, you know, we should be digging into the Bible for the, the, the meat of the word, the spiritual nuggets. But then this is the kind of stuff that you're, you're telling others. That they shouldn't pick sides uh, politically, that they, they shouldn't vote. Essentially, that's what they're doing. I don't. Again, I, I don't think he realizes it. I mean, if that would mean somebody's asking me about something personal like that, uh, you know, I would say that's between you and God. You got to make you know, sort of, yeah. you know, or if you have problems with your wife, or, right. or, or or anything of that nature. Right. You know, I mean, you know, I just stick with the message. I'll. I'll I give you the uh, the interpretation. What right. does it mean when it comes to Christ and the church? Right, right. And then as far as morally, uh, you can make a reference to something that is moral. But I don't think, me personally, uh, I don't think it's good to sit uh, in, in judgment or just giving people advice, earthly advice, on matters that, again, for, you know, it could be different for individuals, you know, it could vary from, from people to people. You don't know their full circumstance, you know, you don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, you don't know what, what's going on in the home and, and that sort of thing. So that that's why I would probably limit what I have to say regarding uh, the Bible. You could make a, a reference to something moral, talk about the moral aspect of the law. But you're right. Uh, I think first and foremost that we want to make sure that we share the gospel being spiritual and, and what it means to how it relates to judgment today. You know? Yeah, uh, today is, uh, yeah, the, I see where the message is today. It's God's judgment is on his own people. Right. But in order for them, I think, to avoid that, they, they just go to the idea that or God is, you know, judging the institutions. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned something once before. It, it seems very personal. You know, that there's this teaching that, well, the the world was laughing at at the church or at the believers. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I think the, the direction that they might uh, be taking with that is the idea that they were laughing at the dates that were set. And the related teachings or the related doctrines but now everything was true now god is laughing i mean come on this is something very you know earthly very carnal i don't think it has anything to do with that i don't think they see what the 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 spiritual meaning is regarding uh laughter and and god's judgment or god taking vengeance on babylon and so the focus goes right back to the what's going on in the world and uh, earthly things and, 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 you know, and that sort of thing. Uh, I was listening to a pastor today, just briefly, uh, they were getting into the war that's going on in Israel. Oh, this is uh, Antichrist setting the stage. Uh, they, they have to defeat Israel or something to that effect 
uh, the nations, uh, Russia is coming to the aid of Iran and they are plotting, you know, to destroy Israel because the Messiah is intending to, you know, come to his people and uh, if they destroy Israel, I mean, on and on and on. You see, again, it's very earthly, very carnal. You're looking at what's going on outwardly in the nations and you're going to be far away from truth. I saw that from Center Reach Church. They, they had a big Bible study going on right after that and that horrific thing that happened in October 7th. And uh, so they had a Bible study just specifically for that. Right. You know, that's all they know, people, today. It's sad, you know. Missing out on all the beautiful spiritual riches, but God's in control of that. Yeah, but I mean, I guess it's kind of surprising that no one really calls the Q&A to say, wait a minute, you're telling us not to take sides, but isn't that what we do when we vote? To me, it, right. it, it's just very simple. It, it's basic. I don't know how people can miss that. Or maybe they don't miss it, but they're just afraid to confront or to bring, the, to bring up the question, fearing that they're going to be an outcast or they're going to be looked upon maybe differently. I don't know. But when you're telling someone, well, you shouldn't take side, well, that's precisely what you do when you when you go out and vote. You either vote Democrat or you vote Republican. Yeah, well, that's very carnal in their understanding of it. You know? And then um, everyone has a preference. They may not exercise it. Uh, you know, they, they may actually decide, and, and they're not, I don't think they're fooling anyone. Uh, God knows our hearts. Uh, people do have preferences, you know, of course they do. And, and by saying that, you're actually, I think, uh, some people, they simply, they, they, they keep quiet about it. You know, they don't want to say it, but it's already there. It's already in the heart. People know what they you know, what they would prefer. And even he that, you know, Chris mentioned that, uh, well, yeah, there are those, there's a certain side that may be in line with the Bible or have Bible uh, believing uh, teachings, like, you know, when it comes to abortion that, you know, they, that we shouldn't kill babies. Okay, well, then that's the lesser of two evils. That's a side. I, I, it, it just yeah. blows. It just blows my mind how people can be thinking along those terms, and not see, Lord willing, what is so very obvious in front of them. Well, you tell someone that don't don't pick a side, and and I think it's essentially what's being said is that well, that's the command. You know, just like they say that the command was to leave the local church, you have to get out of the building. Well, that yeah, essentially I'm is. That's why you're telling people if God is judging the world and therefore, you know, separate yourself from Babylon and they say that Babylon is the world. You, oh, um, yeah, I think just today the idea was if somebody raised some, a question about being blessed in Babylon. OK, and then the, the explanation I think uh, Chris had given was something to the effect that uh, when you left the church, through the social media, uh, God was, I don't know, maybe favorably responding or allowing the word to be to be sent out to different nations. And so that is the blessing that was actually uh, in, in view, perhaps spiritually, when it comes to leaving, ba you know, leaving Babylon. But again, their idea of leaving Babylon is leaving the local churches and going out into the world. So you can see how if you're going to separate doctrines from dates, that, again, I think is one example. Because as far as I can see, none of that is spiritual. And you're talking about earthly things and, and you know, matters of that sort. And then you're going to say, OK, well, that is the transition of the judgment from the church to the outside world. And then that allows you now to take the next step and look into 2033. And so basically what you're doing, you say you're making, uh, you know, you're saying that the Bible is endorsing these doctrines and therefore leading up to 2033. 
So very similar, I think, to what happened with the, the five months of, of May 21, 2011. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So what I was trying to offer, Lord Willing, here, the who, what, where, when, and how. Uh, and I think perhaps the why is somewhere in there. But, yeah, who's doing the separation? God is doing the separation. What is God using for the separation? That, I think, is is perhaps the area where people might miss is that it's it well actually let's look at one of these verses um wherefore come out from among them that ye be separate and be ye separate saith the lord touch not the unclean and i will receive you uh so shall it be at the end oh okay matthew 13 verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Now, you know, I, I've looked at this verse many times, and it, it wasn't until recently, I think, Lord willing, you see the, the, the pattern, the consistency. Who is doing the judging? Who's bringing about the separation? Well, God is. God is doing, bringing about the separation. But how is he doing it? I mean, it's not supernatural. Through the mouth of the unsaved. Right. So he has to be going through a third party, just like when he allowed King Nebuchadnezzar uh, to come against his people of Israel uh, and, and, and to destroy it. Right. Yeah. Gave them the sword. Right. Let them... right. So God is using a third party, uh, even though sometimes he says I or uses the I word. I will do this and I will do that. Well, we have to read that in the light of the whole Bible. He's doing it through the through Babylon. So so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels. Now we see the word angels. Usually, the first image that comes to mind is is celestial, right? Or there are those who agree. Well, yeah, angels. That's uh, an angel is a messenger, and it is. But if this is speaking of the judgments after the tribulation, the judgment on the church. Well, how can, I mean, I don't think we should be having celestial bodies in view. Somehow God is act, you know, using them to direct uh, the affairs of the church. Uh, maybe he is, but I, I, I don't see the Bible. I, I think it's best, Lord willing, to stick with, uh, or let the Bible define the terms. And then we might begin to see that it is God allowing the false prophets, the angels, the messengers, even though he refers to them as angels, he's still talking about messengers. And God can use a messenger to bring about his his purpose. And and right. I, th I, I heard that that same pastor that I mentioned earlier before, he said that. He said, God can use Satan or he can use a wicked to accomplish his purpose. And he's, that's absolutely correct. And, and because these are coming from the body of Christ, you know, let both grow together until the harvest, wheat and tares. So they are a part of the corporate body. So they too, they are messengers. Uh, I'm thinking of a, another verse. Let's see. Here's another one that might be closely related. Um, in Luke chapter 12. Yeah. Huh? The blind will lead the blind. The blind yeah. will lead the blind. Um, let's see, Matthew, Luke chapter 12, verse 46. Let me look at the context here. Beginning in verse five, uh, verse 45. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. What servant? The Lord of that servant. And again, this is one of the areas where it's, it's surprising to see people interpret that. They think that this is talking about the world. The Lord of that right. servant. Since when, the, where in the Bible does God make reference to the outside world as servant? A servant God belongs to, the, right, the servant belongs to the kingdom of God, whether for good or evil. Whether wheat or tear. So the Lord will the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him 
and at an hour when he is not aware. And I think that's why the Bible can say that, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. There it is again, to referring to the servants. Know not the angels, the messengers, neither the Son, the body of Christ. So there's just, you know, a couple of different ways of repeating the same, right. the same person, the same entity. Man, angels, son. So the Lord of that servant. So that's what I think that is in view. Uh, if you go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world, the end of the age. The angel shall come forth and separate, sever the wicked from among the just. I don't think it could be the believers. You see, if, how do we know that? Well, we have to look at the rest of the Bible to see the role that they play in the end time. But we understand also, Lord willing, from the, the rest of the Bible that it is, uh, you know, the, the let the dead bury the dead. Remember that? Let the dead yeah. bury the dead. So it is the unsaved that are that are destroying each other. They're destroying one another. So God is allowing them to come against each other. And we see that spiritually, it's referring to the body of Christ, the collapse of the body of Christ. And also when another thing. When, when, the right. When the Bible says, for example, um, a house divided against itself. And I, I heard, uh, well, I hear Chris from time to time. He makes reference to the house as being the world. It is the house of Satan. So it's the same idea again, apparently, with the servant. A man's foes, a man's enemies, will be there of his own household. What household? Which household? The house of God. The house of God. Christ. The body of Christ. The body of wheat and tares. That again is how uh, you know we 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 might look at the whether or not something is spiritual. Let's see a uh, couple of more verses in Matthew twenty five thirty two. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them. Well, that he there, I think the context is pointing to Christ, right? He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Well, Christ is doing the separation, but again, he is doing it through Babylon, through a third party. Um, Remember he told Noah that he'll destroy the world, he'll do it with the earth. And that's a parable too, you know? Say again? So, we told Noah, he says, I will destroy this, uh, this earth. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't put a flood out, I will destroy it with the earth. Right. And that's a parable. That's and a par that's how the church destroys itself. Right. That's a historical parable. But the focus, I, I think many people, they, they stick with the idea that this is... Um, um, the the when God spoke to Noah, Noah was a type of all believers. They receive revelation, like prior knowledge of the end to come. But you see, how many dates have we gone through, or you know, family, beginning with family radio, well, not just family radio, but every everyone prior to that that have forecasted dates, they never pan out. And usually, when they do, like even with uh, William Miller. Uh, in the great disappointment, it, it, it's very hard for people to admit they were wrong, and so they 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 turn to the idea. Well, it was spiritual. Yeah, I know. It was spiritual after the date passed. Well, yeah, that's easy to say it was spiritual. You weren't telling people that it's a spiritual judgment that was coming. Even Mister Camping, for a short time, began to say, "Well, it is spiritual." You know, he said that. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, it, it came to him, it dawned on him that May 21 was Judgment Day and that it was spiritual. Now we have to look towards October 21, 2011. So not only do they say that it's spiritual, but then they turn to the idea that you're being tested. 
You know, you're being tested. So God is testing you. Everything is a test. If you're not listening to a certain group or, or you know, falling in line with their beliefs and their understanding, well, you're being tested. And I wouldn't be surprised, again, Lord willing, if we're still here, that if we go past, uh, you know, the time that it's the same, I think history would repeat itself. You would begin to hear things, something about something spiritual. There's no way, there was too many proofs in the Bible that it wouldn't happen. Uh, there's no way that it wouldn't happen. And then it was spiritual. And then all of a sudden, perhaps rallying uh, the, the, the people again to say that, well, you're being tested. Well, how many times is God going to test his people before the end? Right. You know? Um, when God, in Galatians 1.15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Um, you know, this is uh, something spiritual here, I think. The mother's womb. Uh, I think he's referring to the body of Christ, the church, uh, and the, the the separation that comes from that mother's womb. So that, that again, I think is a parable. Uh, Revelation 18, verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So you see, this is not the same word that is used here or phrase, but coming out of her, coming out of Babylon, is a separation. Is it not? So when people talk about, oh, well, this is not the same Greek word or it's not the same Hebrew word, I don't think it has anything to do with it. We have to look at the context. Look at the word here. The word separate, beginning in 2 Corinthians 6, 17. It is the, um, the Greek word. Well, it is Strong's reference, 873. But if we're going to simply go by the exact word, well, we would be missing out when that word uh, is translated sever or divide. But in all this context here, in, in the context, this is uh, referring to the separation of wheat and tares. Now, there is, I think, a separation where God makes reference to coming out of Babylon or the elect being separated from the, the tares. But then there's also language of separation where the unsaved are the ones that are that are separating uh, let's see if I can find let's see uh, who shall separate remember that Romans chapter 8 verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ tribulation distress persecution famine nakedness or peril or sword so who are the ones that are separating again uh, that to me I think is a beautiful circle that, that comes right around. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So who actually does or bring about the separation? We know God is doing it, but I, as I mentioned before, he's doing it through a third party. But can you see how it appears that God is saying that Babylon is the one that is causing the separation? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Uh, let's see. Can't think of any related... Uh, let me see something. Hang on one second. I think there's a study where there might be a few additional verses relating to that. Uh, put us under. I think that's one of them. Put us under. One flesh. Remember the, the uh, wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Well, you can look at this one or two ways. You can look at it uh, morally about, you know, marriage and divorce, or you can look at it as the separation of wheat and tares. Who are the ones that are put? In other words, I think what spiritually what God is saying is that uh, God brings the body together, but the unsaved in the church, the falling away in the end, in, in judgment, tribulation, they are the ones that are tearing the, bo the body apart. They, the church, the unsaved body, are the ones who killed the two witnesses. Ephesians 5.31 For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh, let's see. 
It's trying to see the is there some verse that, oh put us under Matthew nineteen. Oh, Jude one verse nineteen. These be they who separate themselves. See that? They separate themselves. Sensual having not the spirit. Luke six twenty two. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. And they shall separate and shall reproach you. So it is through the lies, the false gospels, the false teachings that they cause the separation. They cause the separation. And it begins with, with the church. Now that brings me to another uh, scripture that we've talked about before. Let's see. Uh, the door is now shut. And... The way this verse is written, it's very easy to think somehow that this is talking about Christ. In Luke chapter 11, verse 7, And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Who's that talking about? I think that's talking about Babylon again. But the moment you say, well, my children are with me in bed, it sounds like the language of salvation. But I think in the end, it is the language of judgment. It is the, uh, the church that God commands that they ought to feed the flock. They're not to feed themselves. They're, they're supposed to feed the body of Christ. But they, they fail to do that. Matter of fact, in tribulation, when the church goes apostate, they, uh, they cause a separation by not feeding the flock, by killing the two witnesses. And so they're not able to rise. They're not able to give. They're not able to distribute bread, even though God calls for it. But there is, uh, remember the, the account of Boaz, uh, the, the kinsman redeemer? Christ is the kinsman redeemer, so that when the, uh, the original uh, person who was mandated to fulfill a certain task, when they fail to do that, I think uh, we read in the book of Ruth, then the kinsman redeemer has to step in and marry, uh, I think, uh, in the family, which was uh, apparently a, a spiritual law leading to the idea that when the church fails to provide for the body, then God is the one who's going to uh, take the next step. He becomes the kinsman redeemer. And that's what I think is in view there. We talked about this before, but that's a very uh, challenging area. Um, it, it does require some uh, some Bible study. Say again. You you sound far away, Michael. I think I lost him. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments? In these separation no. separation of wheat and tares. I have a question. Yeah. Er, earlier, when you was talking about a servant, did you say that a, a servant is is uh is is of God? Quote unquote, something like that. Did you say only a servant would be of God? It was in the body of Christ. Uh, the servant in the body, but yeah, it depends on what uh, of, of the, uh, the context of, his, of the right. It depends on the context. So the servant is right. e is either the the tear or it could be the believer. Yeah, depending on context, because we know guys, as you had said earlier, as we all know, God causes us to do whatever His will is. He works through people, right? And by working through people, when we're doing what He wants to do, we are His servants. That could be saved or unsaved. That could be Nebuchadnezzar or anybody, right? And that's what I was called servant when he's when they're doing this will that He wants them to do. That's what I was saying, but I, I was I was trying to make the contrast between those that are saying that uh, a servant. Is related to someone out there in the world who had no oh. no interest in the church. Oh, see, because that that's what I think they do also when they begin to say, "Well, judgment transitions from the church to the world," because now you're supposed to leave the the local building and go out there in the world, and and God is going to uh, 
you know, bless. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's it was a little bit uh, difficult to try and interpret that that moral aspect or that carnal uh, interpretation of it. But yeah, the I, I was simply trying to make the point that when God speaks of a servant, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when you look at not for him. And that's why we read again that, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. That man is a servant. Right. So the focus of those who do not know judgment, it is the body of Christ. Contrary yeah. to what other people believe. So because when they set dates and they say, well, they know ahead of time what they believe the Bible uh, to be teaching regarding the, the last day, well, there, you know, and then if, again, uh, this thing has always been some kind of a controversy. People always throw uh, the verse back at you and say, "Oh, but of that day and hour know with no man." Not, not even the sun knows the day of the hour, and that that's been a thorn, I think, in the side of the church for a long time. Said, I used to think when I was a kid, how does that? How does the sun not know if there's change? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. Mr. Camping uh, played around with it for quite some time. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on. Hold, hold on one second. Uh, people are calling me. I don't recognize this number. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on one second. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hey, Bobby, how you doing? Oh, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, uh, where are you? Um, I'm driving. I'm on the road. I don't know if my service is bad or what. No, no. I, I was uh, doing a, uh, a study here online. Uh, can I call you back in, in a little bit, or you want to call me back in like uh, another half hour or so? Okay, no problem. I'll get back to you. All right. Bye. Um, are you guys still there? Um, all right. Sorry about that. That was my son calling me on the other line. Um, yeah, so the number was persistent. Anyway, uh, I told him I'd get back to him, you know, when we're done. So uh, I'm sorry. The you were saying something, Michael or Margaret? No, you are. Talking about the sun, like like when we judge, give come up with that argument. Yeah. You know, but you're not even Jesus. You're not even the Lord of the Sun. Like what do you mean? Right, right, uh, exactly, and and that's been a thorn. <laughs> Mr. Camping, at one time, I think you remember, he thought that uh, the son was uh, the son of perdition. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the son of perdition, the son of wickedness. Um, yeah, because they didn't know what to do with it. But the only, the, the one thing that they could never do, which perhaps is reflective of what's happening today, the church, the body of Christ, refuses to look in the mirror. They refuse to look in the mirror. Right. They're looking out there. They're looking at the, the, the building, the, the people, the, the institution over there, that denomination, this denomination. And so it's very hard for them to look in the mirror. And, and I thank Lord willing, that's why they, they're, they're not seeing uh, the things that should be looked at spiritually. No, because they're pointing to direct the finger. Right. Back at them when you want to be real faithful. Exactly, exactly. And they don't want to deal with that. They'd rather, and then they're telling you the opposite. They're telling you that, uh, well, because you're of the world, you don't want to admit that judgment is on the world. And so you want to go yeah. back to the church. Yeah, Chris said that to me once, remember? Yeah, I isn't that interesting? He was in me of trying to. You know, cover up for the world. This what the world got to do with any of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They say, well, you don't, you know, judgment is on you, it's on the world. And the reason you don't like it, uh, and, and, you know, this is, you're, you're trying to point it back to the church. 
but the church is already over and done with. Now the judgment is on uh, is on the world, and therefore you're the one who doesn't want to, who don't want to look at uh, you know the the Bible uh, faithfully. Right. Uh, and it, and believe it or not, again, that's the hallmark I think of of judgment. It is a time when good is evil, evil is good. The cross is flipped yeah. uh, upside down, you know, and and that's it's not surprising. That's why it's very hard for people to, and, and sadly, I guess we can say, for people to realize that they are the object of God's judgment, that the church is the object of God's judgment. And they, they will never see it unless God opens their spiritual eyes to it. And no matter how faithfully, uh, and, and that's, again, that would be the reason why today the gospel is very, very scarce. What I mean by that is that the, the truth, the hearing of the word, when the Bible says I, God would send a famine in the land, well, that's exactly it. It's not that, you know, you know you're always going to hear pastors and people preaching, people going to church, but it's understanding the word understanding the the you know the nature of judgment that many people have a problem with uh, yes, exactly but you know as we if one is 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 uh you know be going humbly to the word of god and 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 and, and seeking um uh God's uh, uh, spiritual truth as we read the word and hope and pray and that he will reveal that truth to us. Mm -hmm. As we read the scriptures, I mean, you know, look at those verses. You know, we look at it spiritually. What does it say? Your foes is, 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 is you know, is your, one of your own household. Now, how does one look at that? Yeah. You just look at the world and say, that's the world out there? No. Right. You look in the mirror and all of you that are claiming to be members of the body of Christ. That's right. Yeah. And they have a hard time accepting that the body of Christ is is is, is invisible. It's, it's spiritual. Uh, although you might hear people make reference to Jerusalem above and, you know, being all the elect, the true believers. Well, yeah, obviously nobody knows who they are and. Uh, and then the Jerusalem below, Jerusalem below, according to them, I think is the what the the, the corporate church or the the building, the institution. I don't know. They can't see with the, the new uh, Jerusalem. They they're trying to go outside of time and space and how they interpret that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think you know, they're not seeing that's the redemption, that's the redeemed body coming out of Babylon, right? Coming out of tribulation and coming together as Christ. That's the new Jerusalem, and that's also that's also uh, the new heavens and the new earth. That's New Jerusalem. Yes, that's and, it. That's the new heavens and new earth and new Jerusalem. And it's kind of funny how that you know they might make reference to that when they're looking at these verses. I think. Uh, I don't know if it was today or some other time when Chris was making some kind of a reference to that. He he was leading him. There was no way to go but to conclude that New Jerusalem is, you know, the new heavens and the new earth. But then he will never really take it one step further to say, well, that means that God is using the earth as parabolic language for the church. The earth, the world, the parables. That's parabolic for the body of Christ. Then looking at it, getting uh, raptured up and getting the new spirit glorified spiritual body. Right, right. The nations, the nations. That's that's parabolic language again for the church. That's right. You know, not the nations out there. You know, although the church does belong to every nation, uh, meaning that you're going to hear the gospel, whether it's in your own language or some other language. Uh, you're going to get false prophets, uh, false Christ everywhere, you know, different religion. that That's happening all over the world. But right. I think, Lord willing, the focus is on the name of Christ. It is the name of Christ. They shall put you out of the synagogue um, and cast out your name. Remember that? Cast out your name. Yeah. That's uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you, cast out your name. No, not your name, not Michael, not Margaret, not Dante's, but cast out the name of Christ. 
your name. Christ is the name of all the elect. He is the, the one that is in view. He is the focus of, 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 uh, of the gospel. So they're casting out his name, the name of Christ. How are they doing that? By denying Christ, not literally. You know, people don't realize that when the Bible speaks of hatred or denying Christ, it doesn't mean that you don't want to have anything to do with the Bible. You could be a devout uh, Christian, you go to church, and then, uh, you know, the Bible makes reference to you as denying Christ. Because you're denying the the word, you're coming with a different, a different gospel, a different interpretation of the Bible. Yet you may still claim to be a child of God. Right. And the truth of of, of, of the word of God. Right. Yeah. So it's the but truth. But you don't know it, but you are because you follow the false doctrine, so that you're denying truth. Right. You're denying Christ because He is truth. And that is the focus of, of the judgment. It is the, the, the name of Christ that is under attack. That's why you see, you know, the chaos. You see the chaos in the world, but I don't think, you know, that that's not the the guy. That's not the, uh, you know, the focus of the judgment. Uh, it could be a reflection. There might be some kind of a shadow, uh, you know, response to that. But the idea is the... God forsaking the body of Christ so that the gospel becomes less and less. People understand it less. Uh, anything that is spiritual goes over the head of, of others and, and they're not understanding the nature of the judgment. So it is a lack of truth in the world as opposed to, you know, God is judging that institution. They don't know what is a, a man or a woman. But, you know, I, I don't even believe that. Because I think it's all political. A lot of things that yeah. are a lot of things that are happening. It's not that they don't know right and wrong. They know right and wrong. People know right and wrong, but they they suppress it, you know, for their own political reasons, and so they they come up with uh, ideas of cancel culture and women, uh, men in women's bathroom and and so on and so forth. But they do that, I think, for a reason. So that now, well, let's say hypothetically. Let's say, Lord willing, that Trump becomes president and then he does away with a lot of uh, this nonsense about, you know, sharing bathrooms or, uh, you know, women, uh, men and women's sport. Uh, well, then what happens then? Let's say that, you know, there's hardly any talk of it anymore. What are you going to say then? You see, it's because... It, 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 and that, that's why I think it's important, Lord willing, to, to vote, to take a side, to decide, at least try to, you know, choose the lesser of two evil. You know, of course, every one of them, you know, whether it's uh, Republican or Democrat, they all have their, their weakness and, and their sin. But so do, you know, so do you. So do I. So we're not, we're not going to be perfect in understanding but if you're looking at, if you're making the gospel, if you're making that the focus of the gospel, then I think you're missing out on, on you know, the, the true nature of, of, of the judgment. Right. When they say, when that lady, uh, that Supreme Court, she was going to be, uh, you know, a justice, and they were asking her about, you know, the definition of a woman. You don't know, you don't think she knows what a woman is? Of course she knows what a woman is. <laughs> Of course she does. She knows what a woman is. She could she could tell you, but she purposely was filibustering, perhaps because of her party, how they might respond. Yeah. You know, so she's she's out there playing a role. She's she's not just representing herself. She's representing her party, and they purposely do things, you know, to to, I guess to to try to take power away from the other party. And so these things are not done accidentally. They're not done, you know, just they're done for political reasons. You know, a, a lot of it. Right. Uh, I, I think the question really becomes the consciousness uh, because of it. You and I, you know, we might hesitate. You know, if we were in that same position, we, we would probably turn around and say, oh, you know what? I don't care 
the party about the party that I represent. Maybe from that perspective, you may not want to go into politics because you don't want to lie. You know, you're going to want to be faithful and tell the truth in everything that you do. But there are those, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. There are people that may be in politics that, that you know, whether they, they might be, you know, a senator or, or whatever, uh, they have a certain respect for the Lord. They understand, you know, uh, the, the Bible, or at least they, they say they do, or, or, or at least they carry the name of Christ, that they have a certain sense of, of right and wrong. And so they will try to be they will try to be as, as as faithful as they can be to the type of work that they are doing. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead, Morgan. No, I was just saying everybody, you know, what you just said, that's everybody. Yeah. So, you know, someone they may their conscience is their conscience is not bothering them, so they may say things or do things uh, that is contrary to the Bible or God's laws. Uh, moral laws, uh, but none of, that doesn't mean everyone would be in that same. You know, they they would react the same if they were in that situation. So that 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 lady, of course, she knows what a woman is. She's a woman. You know, she, she yeah, she's fine. That's what it is. They all lying. exactly. Yeah, she's lying. You know, and uh, and and that's what politics is. There, there's a lot of lies in politics. I can understand that. That may not be my first choice if I wanted to do something because I know just like maybe I wouldn't want to be a lawyer. Because I know every now and then I may have to bend the rules and, and you know, my conscience is going to bother me if I have to do certain things. Uh, whereas other people, even though they know what's wrong, and the Bible tells us that the law is written on the heart of man. So they know, you know, instinctively that it's wrong to do certain things. Yeah, but they don't care about the law of God. They don't care. They don't about the law is written on their heart because they want to be God to themselves. They want to be God, period. Right. They, or they want to their own thing. They don't care about doing what God wants you to do. Right. They don't. They don't want to submit to to that God or whatever you know their idea of that God is. Um, right. Yeah. So that that's it's going to happen. They don't want. They want to please themselves. Whatever it is. Right. Right. No. Yeah. But but as the Bible says, you know that that the law is written on the heart of man, and 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 they know instinctively. That's why many people, you know, when it comes to you know the the reality of things that yeah they're gonna they're gonna die they're gonna get sick they're gonna die uh and it's not just the christian who's aware of that everybody's aware of that and how they respond right. to it might be might be a different uh a different matter right exactly so yeah i mean these things and, and that's why again i don't think we should be looking at that aspect of it in terms of gospel truth because people know it's not like you know people have lost consciousness and and if you know and tell themselves oh you know I'm really a man although people do that you know well I'm I'm a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa um, you know there may be people that I don't know probably probably not a whole lot of people but they truly in their gut or you know from birth they see themselves as that. Yeah, that, that that's an that's an element of concern. That that's something to really be concerned about. Uh, but for the most part, I think when you're talking about a Black Lives Matter politics and this and that cancel culture, a lot of it is political. Uh, as the old saying goes, you know, where you stand depends on where you sit. You know, and if you hate the other party, so you're gonna uh, personally or forcefully do things that is going to try to upset the other party. I mean, look at when, when Trump was, was president and this whole Russia, Russia, Russia and, and all these other investigations that went on. You, th you don't think that these people knew that Trump was innocent? Of course they knew, right? But then again, because they don't like him, because they themselves, they want to be in power. So they're going to, you know, tr lie about it and then try to forcefully remove whoever it is that they don't like. That That's what these parties do. You know, so I guess ultimately, you know, the the fact is that they, they know, you know, people know certain things. They may not want to admit it or they might, you know, play dumb or play ignorant, but that's not going to stop uh, them coming face to face with God's judgment. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. All right. Yeah, it's, uh they they all they all know what you know 
even those that say, well, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body, or mm. I'm a, oh, I'm a woman, you know, yeah. uh, trapped in a man's body. Regardless, that's just lies and excuses. Yeah, but yeah. They, oh, what they really are, because God is the one that created them. Yeah, and and God, you know, again, as the Bible says, God God puts it in 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 in, in, in certain terms that they know that's how we can judge people we can judge the world because they we are created in god's image we can deny 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 all we want but at the end of the day we know we know uh just recently i was looking at again you know things about dna and how even the people that are not christians or they may not call themselves christians there is no way they can escape the fact that DNA is a code. Was it a G A T C or something like that? Just like a computer program uses binary codes zero one one zero zero whatever. That does not happen accidentally. It doesn't come along accidentally. Somebody had to program that code in order for the computer to relate to it, to interpret it. Same thing with DNA. It's it's a language. It's a code. It's a computer program that even Bill Gates, I think, at one time said that's the most complex that mankind has ever known or seen. So it would be impossible for man to even uh, even begin to put something like that together. So you're gonna, so they understand that it's not accidental. So they can see God, but because God is not out there constantly, you know, reminding people that, hey, you're a sinner and I'm God. So they, they I don't know, maybe they, they're deluded in the fact that uh, somehow they're, they're never gonna have to respond or account for anything. You know, but yeah. Yeah, I know. You we, know, we know the it's, truth. It's, you know, we can just look and see what's going on out there in the world on a second or nanosecond of every hour of every day of what's going on. And these people out there and out there are acting like there's nothing that they're not, you know, it's nothing out there. I, I do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be accountable. I'm just going to do it and, and, you know, don't have any, uh, you know, yeah. don't have any. I don't know how they go to bed at night. I don't know how they sleep at night even. Well, you know, that I think, Lord willing, that's where uh, all of us were like that. Uh, I think ultimately, you know, that's why salvation is the number one uh, thing in the world. That, that's the one thing that should be a priority because salvation clears the conscience. Salvation brings you to reality. It brings you back yes, to a sense of right and wrong. Uh, whether you like it or not, uh, and, and, and it puts a stop to whatever method of, 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 of thinking that you had. Um, doesn't mean you're going to be sinless, but it should make a tremendous difference. And more importantly, most importantly, and I think we could probably end with that, is the desire to be not just obedient to moral laws, but to be faithful in how we bring about the gospel to others. Because that's where I think ultimately uh, God is most concerned with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye.